Hey guys, it's Reese. Welcome back to another video, and we're finally starting the particle series. I know it's it's kind of been a while since I've planned this, but I'm finally delivering the videos to you guys. And today we're just gonna be looking at all the beginner stuff for particles that you need to know if you want to get into particles. I will have an advanced tutorial out at another point, and then I will have more specific particle tutorials like how to make fire, how to make rain, that sort of thing. So let me know what particles you guys do want me to sh uh, show how to make in future videos, and I'll definitely do those. But anyways, without further ado, let's get right into the video. So here we go, I just kind of set up a, a particle emitter in these parts, I just disabled the other ones, but we'll go ahead and look at the first one. And we'll, there's a lot to unpack here, there's a lot of properties that go into particles, but, but believe me, you always have to trust the process. And today we're only going to be going over simpler stuff instead of like all these advanced graphs and everything. But we'll get to those in another video. I'm just not going to go over those today. But first what we have at the top, everyone knows what color is. You know you have your color value. You can change it. And you know. So you can just pick whatever color you want. The darker your color or the higher your color is, the darker it's going to be. So if you want a more kind of neutral or so if you want a sort of lighter more desaturated color like that that's a very nice blue right there as opposed to having a very harsh dark blue like that I mean sure you could use that but you know if you have something that's more desaturated it always typically looks better next we have light emission light emission essentially makes it neon so it basically just emits light from the particle uh, as you can see the higher it is the more light it's gonna emit and that's how you get that sort of glow on particles you might see we also have light influence and light influence is exactly what it sounds like it determines how the particle is colored based on the light in the in your game so i don't know exactly what that takes into account but i'm assuming it says your lighting properties we're going to skip over orientation and go straight to size size is very simple it's basically just how big the particle is in studs if i think so uh see if you just increase it then it's going to be a little bigger you can use decimal for all these two uh, Let's go to two, you know, if you want them really big. Uh, if you want them really small, you could do 0.5. And that's kind of, and that's basically it for size. Uh, next we have texture. Texture is exactly what it sounds like. It is just the texture of your particle. So here we had just have the default sparkle on it, as you can see there. If we go on a toolbox and grab something real quick, let's just look up uh, particle. And let's just grab something like this. Let's just grab this little blood particle. Now, if you see, we put it in our texture, then it's going to be changed to our particle. Let's take this little, these dots. There we go. You can also change the color. So, if it's a white texture, it's going to be, you're going to be able to freely control the color. But if it's already colored, like if it's like this red one, you're going to see that it's not going to be the green that we put. It's going to be kind of a mix of the two colors and so now it's black. Just a good thing to keep in mind when you're working with particles. Let me go back to our sparkles. There we go. Now our next thing is transparency. Also exactly what it sounds like. If we put it on a 0.6, you're going to see our particles are more transparent. Or not, 0.8. And then one is completely invisible. Next we have Z offset. Z offset is sort of like the forward backward position of the particle. So if you see we make it like, uh, I forget how exactly it works, but if you have multiple layers of particles, I'm pretty sure it determines like what order, like which one is on top. But I think I only have the one particle here, but let me try it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, I've done it before, but I'm not sure why it's not working right now. Well, next we have uh, down here acceleration. Acceleration is also what it sounds like. It basically, just it accelerates the particles over time. So as they've uh, as their lifetime goes on, then they'll get faster. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we put it on x1, then you'll see our particles start accelerating in the x direction. As you can see, it's kind of like that curve there. So it starts out slow, but then it gets a lot faster up there. But we can also do it for the other directions. If you want to make it accelerate up faster, then you're going to see there that it's going to start slow down here and then start getting faster up there. But you can also do it negatively too. So if you want to make it go in the negative uh, direction. So if you had this on like x2 and negative 1, you're going to see it sort of creates like this little arch. 
that you see it kind of it kind of comes up and then it sort of uh, floats it down almost which is a pretty cool effect but next we have drag and I'll remove acceleration for now just to show you drag because drag is a little different but also similar in a way it's sort of like acceleration but in reverse and it's not like you're doing a negative value but it essentially just makes the part slow down over time so the higher this value uh, as you can see the, uh, when a particle starts coming away from the part and up here it slows down um, and it'll slow down to a complete stop and depending on your drag value that'll determine how slow it slows down so as you can see 0.2 it's gonna sl still slow down but not as fast next we have lock to part lock to part let me show you what happens without lock to part go ahead and move this you're gonna see that our particle is still being emitted but they're not moving with the part but now if we turn that on, then you're going to see it. whenever we drag the part, the particles are all going to come with. Next we have time scale. Time scale is essentially, uh, no exact description to my knowledge, but basically if you decrease the value, you see everything's just going to slow down. And this is like a really easy way if you, if you made something too fast and you don't want to have to go back and readjust all your values, you can just kind of simply use your time scale to make more kind of precise adjustments to it. Quick and uh, quick and easy, but you know I've never really used this because I always get them right the first time. And no, no mean to flex, but <laughs> that's what time scale does. Velocity inheritance. I forget what this does. I'm just gonna completely skip over it. Maybe I'll cover it in my next video. I don't think it's all that important since I've never really touched it. But next we'll go to emission direction, and emission direction is really simple. As you can see, it's sort of like a decal or some sort of texture, like when you have it on a, a surface or part it basically just controls which way it's going to be coming from so if we put it on the back then our particles are going to be going back uh, on the back of our part i probably should have rotated this that's our front that's our back it's going to be coming off the back uh, i don't think i have to go through all these but you know bottom it's going to be going downwards front coming from the front left from the left right from the right and then top from the top enabled very simple just enables and disables it so say you want to turn it off, like you're trying to work on it, like work on some model, but the particles are in the way, then you can just, there you go, boom. But next we have lifetime. This is where it starts getting a little more complex, and this is where it introduces min-max values. So min-max values are essentially the lowest time and the highest time. So for our lifetime, but it also has every number in between these. And I think if you add a decimal, it's going to have a, make it in a decimals too, but you might have to correct me if I'm wrong on that, but for a lifetime, basically it means uh, the life of the particles, how long the particle is going to last. So we turn this back on and I'll show you. So these particles will last anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. As you can see, some of them will start disappearing like up there before others. So that's kind of what the, uh, that's kind of what the min max is. So if we make this 1 and then 2, you're going to see that some of them will disappear at one and then some of them will disappear closer to two so it just kind of helps make your particles look more varied instead of completely static if you see we make them two they're always just going to disappear at the same time and it might look a little weird so by adding that min max it'll kind of help you have a little bit of variation to it instead of looking so kind of plain next we have rate rate is how fast the particles are produced if you see we turn it down then our particles are going to start being produced a lot uh, slower until the point that you know it's gonna be like one every second if you turn it all the way up then you're gonna see there's a lot of particles coming out pretty simple stuff we'll go on to rotation next and what rotation is rotation is essentially how the part is rot or how the particle is rotated so you see all these are just rotated zero let me actually decrease the speed but we'll get into speed in a second all these are rotated zero and Say we just increase our rotation or decrease it, then you're gonna see these particles spawn in at that rotation. But what's cool about this is it also has a min max value, so we can have a minimum value and a maximum value. And if we have negative 180 to 180, that's gonna have a completely random rotation on it, which is good for having some variation on your particle. But the other thing we can do for rotation is rotation speed, and basically, rotation speed will make your part like rotate, and that's what I mean by that. 
but rotation speed will just basically make your particle rotate. Obviously, we're not going to have this high, but say you want it from 0 to 15, or 5 to 15 or something. That way, some of them will rotate a little faster than others with our main max value. Pretty cool effect, though, but having some variation to it. Let's go down to speed. I already showed you this a second ago, but speed is just how fast the particles uh, move. Again, we have our min max values. The min will be the slowest they move, and the max will be the fastest they move. If it's the same, they're all going to move at a constant rate. This is another good way to add some more kind of variation to your particles. As you can see, some of them move slower, some of them move faster. And finally, we have spread angle. Spread angle, spread angle just spreads out the particles uh, as they come out. So, as you can see here, uh, they're all just moving in one continuous straight line upwards from the part, and if we increase our x value then this will make an angle on the x axis that they will be spread out across so as you can see there they're going to be spread out across like a 40 degree angle on the uh, on the x axis and we can do y too so then that will be both directions and now you can see it's going to be spread out in all directions around the part we can also do 180 and that way it'll be uh, basically like every direction 360 360 will be every direction so if you want a particle to come out like from everywhere on the part then that's the easiest way to do it but you see how some of these particles will like come over and on top so they'll come from like this side to that side a really easy way to fix this is to add an attachment to your part uh, leave the attachment alone don't really move it or anything but that'll put it in the center of your part and then just drag your particle emitter into the attachment and that way all the particles will come from the attachment so you don't have any of that weird crossing over and this makes your particles way more even as you can see if we turn off our spread angle then they're also going to be in a straight line but say you don't want that you can still kind of turn it up a little bit to have some variation now i just hop back in my game vibe miami to show you some of the things you can do with particles some of these particles are kind of simple but some of them are really detailed you're not limited to a couple different things you're not limited to having fire or whatever or you're like rain particles or that sort of thing you can do a lot of different stuff with it if you know how to use particles properly and you can see you get a ton of cool effects with them particles can really enhance the experience in your game not only for having these sort of effects that'll be on your player but also just in your environment in your game in general say you have coins on the ground and they have like little sparkle particle coming out from them or have the trees with the uh, like leaves kind of falling down that sort of thing there's a lot you can do with particles though I definitely recommend you guys keep watching the series but anyways if you did enjoy the video please like comment and subscribe and remember join our discord we are doing a giveaway at 100 members we're almost there uh, but anyways, see you guys. Peace.